Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. Can I just say how pleased I am to be able to represent the Liberal Democrats at this debate on International Women's Day as number 454. Um, but I'm proud to say also, in contrast to some of the previous members' contributions, I'm not the first woman to represent my seat, or even the second. I am, in fact, the third Liberal Democrat woman to represent Richmond Park, and I'm extremely proud of that. One of the advantages of being a London MP is I get to get home to my family every evening and spend time with them every morning. As the mother of young children, this is a particular blessing to me, but it does mean that I live a life of contrasts. Yesterday, for example, I spent the first part of the morning trying to get my son to clean his teeth and my daughter to brush her hair. I then travelled into Westminster and challenged the Prime Minister in the chamber about her spending priorities for education. <coughs> of the two things, the latter was more remarked upon. It was heard by members here, it was recorded in Hansard, it was shared on Twitter. But in many ways, getting my son to clean his teeth was the greater achievement. <laughs> it took more ingenuity, more effort and more emotional commitment. But nobody noticed, cared or applauded me for it. It often sounds ironic or self-deprecating to refer to the tasks of motherhood as being more taxing than tasks carried out in the professional sphere. But in this case, I'm not being ironic. It is precisely true. But we are so used to underplaying the work we do as mothers and work we do in the home that we don't think anyone will take us seriously if we talk seriously about it. So today, in the spirit of the motion to recognise the achievements of women, I want to celebrate the everyday achievements of women, the unacknowledged, the unrewarded, the unnoticed achievements. I want to start with childbirth, probably the ultimate feminine achievement. Women are often told not to make too much of a fuss about childbirth. Millions of women all over the world and throughout history have done it. Most of them don't have access to pain relief. It's the most natural thing in the world, and so on. But for me, the births of my three babies continue to be the most profound experiences of my life. We don't actually talk all that much about childbirth. Yes, we discuss the timing and order of events, what we were doing when we went into labour, how long it took, but we haven't really developed a language to talk about how it feels or how it makes us feel. We just don't have the words. Although the experience leaves a lasting imprint, it's never fully acknowledged. The memory of childbirth remains with us, unshakable, unshareable, but never fully expressed. So I want to take advantage of this occasion to say what a huge achievement it is to give birth and how proud we should be as women of our capacity to do that. I also want to acknowledge those first weeks and months of a baby's life when a woman gives herself over entirely to looking after her child. We all choose different ways to do this, but the achievement is the same. Whether our children are now fully grown adults or small children still, they are only here because their mothers kept them alive in those early weeks and months. Again, the effort and sacrifice this takes is often dismissed or overlooked, so I want to be able to say today to mothers everywhere, be proud of what you did. Your children would not be what they are without you. The long days and short years of childhood that follow are full of minor, unacknowledged successes. Wrestling them into coats, coaxing them to sleep, getting them to eat vegetables, the hard, hard work of persuading resisting children to do what's best for them. Each tiny triumph is a building block to a better person, but the reward is a very long way away, and nobody will remember the battles you fought to make it happen. So to every mother who managed to get her children up, dressed, teeth cleaned and to the school gates on time this morning, particularly in their World Book Day costumes, not just this morning but every morning, be proud. Don't underestimate yourself. It's a great achievement to raise children. I'm conscious that people will think I'm stereotyping women by referring only to their achievements as mothers. And if I'm doing that, it's because I want to focus on the things that only women do and only women can do. I'm just as proud of women who achieve great things in a professional, creative or sporting field, especially if they do it against a background of gender bias, but I want to focus on the things that women do. And I don't want to ignore the role of men in child rearing. All the fathers I know are as equally involved in the unglamorous, difficult bits of parenting as the mothers are, but this debate is about International Women's Day, and we should acknowledge that globally the vast majority of child rearing and domestic work is done by women. And the truth is that this is why our achievements in this sphere are so often overlooked and underappreciated. It's because this work is done by women that it is so often ignored or taken for granted. I am as grateful as any other woman of my age that social progress has enabled me to have a broader life than just being a wife and mother. And I am glad that so many other women are also making the most of opportunities to leave their homes and go out to work. It makes a positive difference, not just to them and to their families, but to our economy and our society. 
But it means that women are not at home to do the unpaid domestic labour that they might have done 30 years ago and had done for centuries. We have found ways to outsource the tasks of child rearing and domestic upkeep and meet the cost of that from our own pocket. But the Sorry. The job of looking after sick and elderly relatives is now increasingly being met by the state, and we need to find ways to, <laughs> to meet the cost of social care that result. Thank you. Perfect.